<laughs> Jim, come on, sit down. Have one with me. Hey, a glass for Mr. Barkley. <laughs> what are you doing all dressed up like a San Francisco banker? Hey, I bet today's a big day, huh? It's the day, all right. You know, Nancy Stays doesn't come into Stockton, so I have to pick her up in Stego at 3 o'clock. You're not nervous, are you? Nervous? What have I got to be nervous about? Not a thing. Darn right. You know, Heath, I must have written Nancy Briggs a hundred letters over the past two years, and it's just like caught her in person. You bet. She's a genteel Eastern woman, but that don't make no difference. She and me are gonna get along just fine. Well, you don't need any more of that. You're gonna meet that three o'clock stage. What do you say I do the honors? Well, that's mighty kind of you, Heath. <laughs> Hey, easy, Jim. <laughs> I think Nancy will like these. Well, we'll soon find out. Hey, easy, Jim. I'm just fine. I'm just fine. You sure you can drive that buggy all right? Yes, I can drive that buggy. Don't worry. Ah, Jim! Ah. Hey, you hurt, Jim? It's my back again. Well, don't you move. I better get the dog. No, no. Oh, Nancy, she's expecting me. Well, you can't drive that buggy like that. She's waiting for me. Who's going to pick her up, Heath? Sorry, mister. What happened? The outlaws were held up. It was awful, just awful. He shot the driver and that poor girl. She, she caught a stray bullet. Miss, Miss Briggs here and I were lucky to escape with our lives. How long ago did they leave? Oh, about a half an hour. We thought it'd be safer to stay here by the stage. Oh, you were right. We'll see the sheriff when we get into Stockton. Do you think we could put the suitcases in your surrey there? Sure. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm supposed to meet someone at Pishtiko. Well, I'm Heath Barkley, Miss Briggs, Jim North's friend. Oh, hello. I'm afraid I have some disappointing news. I hope he didn't change his mind. No, that's just a little trouble with his back. Nothing serious. Oh, I'm glad. It's nothing to worry about. In fact, Jim sent me pleased to you. Oh, they're lovely. Well, the sooner we get started, the sooner you can tell Jim in person. Thank you very much, Mr. Barkley. I'll be staying in town for a while. I'd like to buy you a drink sometime, if I may. It'll be my pleasure. Goodbye, Miss Briggs. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Clayton. And I want to thank you for all the kindness you've shown. Don't mention it. Oh, and I'd, uh, I'd like to wish you the greatest happiness in your forthcoming marriage. Thank you. I must confess, Mr. Barclay, I'm a little bit nervous. Well, there's nothing to be nervous about. Well, I keep thinking that Jim won't like me. Oh, Jim will like you. 
Miss Briggs, uh, have you ever been in Denver? Denver, no. Carson City? No, Mr. Brockley, why? Well, you just look familiar to me. Well, I don't see how that could be. I, I've never been west of St. Louis. I mean, school teachers, see, they can't afford to travel very much. Uh, Miss Brockley, you're a good friend of Jim's, aren't you? Well, I've known him a long time. Well, tell me about him. Well, I wouldn't know where to begin. What's his favorite kind of food? Well, I hope you're good with chili peppers. Chili peppers? He acquired quite a taste for them in Mexico last year. Oh. Well, didn't he write you about that? Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, well, I guess he wouldn't. Why? What happened? Well, there was a flood in some small Mexican border town. He and Maria went down to see what he could do. He stayed about three months. Oh, three months. And he's quite a man, and his, his wife must have been quite a woman to stay down there with him. Maria's his housekeeper. His wife, Rachel, died eight years ago. Oh, of course, his housekeeper. How could I forget? He, he's mentioned her so often in his letters. How much further do we have to go? About 20 minutes. Oh, I'm much more tired than I thought. Mind if I rest a little bit? Everything's going to be fine. Yes. Here they come. Oh. Maria, here, hide this. Quick. Uh, no, Maria, how do I look? Oh, you look handsome, Senor G. Good, come, Maria. Maria, I will stand here. You open the door. Yes. Well, there she is, Jim, safe and sound. Uh, please, I take. I'm so glad you're here. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, yes, it was Wonderful. fine. Wonderful. I'm glad you had a nice trip. I better be going, Jim. Oh, no, Heath. No, stay. Uh, uh, have some coffee or something. Come in. Come in. You must be tired, Nancy. The coffee will pick you up. And uh, we'll have something to eat. Come on. Sit down. Right here. Sit down. Nancy, you and me, we got a lot to talk about. I suppose we do. Now you can understand why I didn't ask for your picture. It means I'd have to send you one of mine. Well, I didn't want you to see what I looked like, my age and all. Jim, you don't have to. Well, now you've seen me. You can turn around and walk out right now, Nancy. I wouldn't blame you one bit, not one bit. Just ask Ethan, he'll take you back to town. I want to stay. You sure, Nancy? I'm sure. I promise you, you're going to be happy here. I'm going to make you happy. I'll love you. Uh, everybody will. Jim, I, I'm, I'm happy already, and I'll make you a good wife. The best I know how. Excuse me, dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Oh, well, Nancy, I don't want you spending all that time in the kitchen from now on. Wait till you see the dinner she's prepared for us. She thought of everything. As a matter of fact, she put in just the right amount of chili pepper. Oh, with a little help from Maria. Jim is fortunate to have found you, Nancy. And we're all very glad he did. Thank you, Mrs. Barclay. Tell me, what can I do to help you with your wedding? As a matter of fact, Victoria, I was going to talk to you about that. Nancy, you'd like to go into town and buy a few things? Well, I'd love to take her. I know just the seamstress to make your wedding dress. Heath can drive us in, and I'm sure there'll be enough time for me to show you our school. Your school? I hope you like it. We can use a good elementary grade teacher. The children are lovely, and with your experience, there'll be no problem at all. Oh, Mrs. Barclay, I don't intend to teach school. Oh. Nancy, in your letters, I thought you said you'd like to maybe teach school. Oh, well, Jim, I've changed my mind. I don't want to teach school. Oh, I mean, you, you understand, don't you? I, I have a more important job here, learning to be a rancher's wife. I want to devote all my time to that. Of course, Nancy, I understand. I'm sure you do too, Victoria. Of course. We'll find somebody else. Dinner is served. 
Oh, Jim, would you mind too much if I escorted the next Mrs. North to dinner? <laughs> Not at all, Victoria. Let's make a few decisions. Yeah, well, I think I just made one. I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> Francisco. Can I play poker? I want one card. Mr. Barkley? Three. The dealer will uh, try his luck with his. I bet five dollars. I'll raise you five. It's Mr. Barkley's bet. I'm out. I said I'll raise you five. I'll just call you. Pull the flush. Not good enough. Have a full house, all royal. He didn't have to draw any. Let's say you're a pretty slick dealer. Take it easy, mister. Can you get your hand off? Pull your dog off right now. Come on, Charlie. Mr. Barkley, it's a very bad habit of mine playing poker with strangers. I must get over it. And may I buy you that drink now? Whiskey. Bartender. Two whiskeys, please. How is, uh, how is Miss Briggs? Just fine. Should we get married pretty soon? Well, that's splendid, splendid. Too bad about that other girl on the stage. What was her name? Miss, uh, Miss Morrison. Sheila Morrison. It's a terrible shame about her. Was she from out here or just visit? Well, I, I really don't know. She never said much of anything. Well, you're lucky. Usually a man rides with a woman more than an hour. He gets her life history. <laughs> yes, of course. Would you, uh, would you like a cigar, Mr. Barkley? No, thanks. Well, that's unfortunate. Very good, you know. Jack's Saloon, Copper Creek. Yes, you, you've been there, huh? A couple of years back. Well, it's a terrible mud hole. I personally am very glad to be out of there. Well, I must be going. Thanks for the drink, Mr. Clayton. See you around. I'll look forward to it. Suitcase, Heath. Nobody's called for it, and we ain't found no kin to notify. Anything in it might help identify. Just clothes, like these. Some sort of uh, dance hall girl, wouldn't you say? Thanks, Phil. It's nice of you to ferry me back and forth like this, Heath. Just trying to thank you, that's all. Your mother, she's a wonderful person, you know? I've never met anyone like her. In fact, everyone's been very kind to me. 
Jim's friends. Everyone, except you, Heath. You don't like me, do you? I have no reason not to like you, do I? No, you have no reason at all. Ha! I've been waiting for you. Here, Nancy, let me take those. What did you do? Come on in, Heath. You didn't buy the whole store. Well, what's in this one? Oh, let me warn you, Nancy, before I open it up, I'm not one for fancy hats. I hope it's not too fancy. No. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Put it on. Oh, she's gonna make a fine wife, ain't she? She sure is. Well, I better be getting on, Jim. You gonna stay for supper? Well, I'd like to, but it's Brandon time, and you know how that is. Well, you have to eat. You might as well eat with us, ain't that right, Nancy? Yes, please stay, Heath. Well, I'd like to, but uh, if I don't get back, Nick's liable to fire me. Oh, listen, if Nick fires you, you'll come to work for me at twice the pay. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Goodbye, Nancy. Goodbye, Heath. Goodbye, Heath. Well, I guess we'll get some of this merchandise upstairs. Nancy? What's wrong, Nancy? Heath doesn't like me. Doesn't like you? That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Well, that's true. But he's a friend. He's a good friend. What reason would he have? Anybody can see how beautiful you are and how happy you're making me. Any man would be a fool not liking you, loving you. Maybe he likes you too much. He likes you too much and he's afraid to admit it. You know, young fellas are like that sometimes. No, Jim. It's nothing like that. You're the prettiest girl ever to come to Stockton. Prettiest girl most likely ever to show up here. That's it, all right. If I'd known you were half as beautiful as you are, I'd have sent Shorty, my foreman, to pick you up. He's about as tall as he is wide and handsome as a mud fence. Jim, I want you to promise me to never be jealous of Heath, of Shorty, anyone. Promise me that. I promise. You're what I want, Jim. Just what I want. Nancy. But, Jared, you're going to San Francisco anyway. Now, couldn't you at least stop by Black and Foster's and see if you can find something? Yes, I will be in San Francisco. Yes, I could stop by Black and Foster's. However, as much as I like Jim and his bride-to-be and wish them every happiness... Well, it's not a question of their happiness. It's a question of a wedding gift. Ah, that's important. True. But so is this extremely complicated case I'm trying. Well, I suppose I could find something here in Stockton. As a matter of fact, I saw two beautiful silver candelabras at Hammond's. Candelabras? Mm-hmm. Well, I... What do you think about that, Heath? Hmm? Oh, fine. Heath, Heath you know we got a whole army of our cattle out there waiting to be branded. Uh, I'm leaving town for a few days, Nick. After Friday. Can't wait till then. Well, I can't spare you. I need to finish that branding. I'll hire some extra men. We've hired all the extra men we can. What I need is a man out there to take charge and give orders, like he owned as much of this ranch as I do. Well, gentlemen, lovely lady, I bid you good morning. And please, do not fail to let me know how all this comes out. What do you have to do that's so all-fired important? Never mind. It'll wait till Friday. Well, after Friday, you can take off for a week. If you like, you can go to China for all I care. Keith, something is wrong, isn't it? I'm not ready to talk about it just yet, Mother. There. Can you put his feet up? What do you think? Oh, I think it, it looks very nice. <sighs> Maria, when we started this about an hour ago, the lamp was right where it is. The side table, right where he is. <sighs> right back where we started. Uh, but the chair, we have moved the chair. <laughs> yes, we moved it about two feet. Oh, Maria, I'm hopeless. I'll just have to face up to the fact that Jim's wife, Rachel, she knew where to put a piece of furniture and make it stick. <sighs> Maria, what kind of woman was she? Oh, she was a, a nice woman, a, a good woman. 
Come sit beside me. Come on, sit down. All right. Tell me about her. You love him very much, don't you? Yes, I do. I love him. You are good for him. Better in a way than, than she could ever be. There is a, a lightness in him, a, a laughter. It was never there before. Never. Well, then, do you think if I can't cook as well as she could, or, or sew, or, or move furniture, you think we'll be all right together? Oh, you'll be much better than all right together. <laughs> oh, thank you, Maria. Well, what are you two cooking up? And Maria, talking about cooking. I will have lunch ready in, in just a few minutes. Good. Well, Nancy, what have you been up to? Well, how about that? After 25 years, I can finally put my feet up. Thank you, Nancy. Well, I'm looking for Mr. Jim North. You're looking at him? Come on in. What can I do for you? Well, the gentleman at the bank told me I should look you up, sir. I'm, I'm Reed Clayton. I understand you have some acreage for sale. I have lots of acreage, Mr. Clayton, but I don't know where you got the idea that any of it was for sale. Hello, Miss Briggs. Nice to see you again. Hello, Mr. Clayton. You two know each other? Oh, yes. He was the gentleman that was so kind to me on the stagecoach. Oh, Mr. Clayton, a pleasure to thank you for that. Well, don't thank me, sir. Now, if I could talk to you about that acreage, I uh, think I should tell you I represent Clayton Industries. You've heard of us, of course. Oh, yes, I have. Are you planning to put in an operation here? Yes, sir, a packing plant. It would employ about 300 people. Now, I know that might not mean much to you, sir, but to the people of Stockton, it might mean a great deal. Yes, it would. I'll tell you what, Mr. Clayton, I'll saddle up a horse and we'll go for a ride. Maybe we can talk business. Nancy, would you get Mr. Clayton a drink? <laughs> Better be getting back. It's uh, getting late. Yes, of course. Heath, you know Jim loves me very much, don't you? I love him. I want to make him happy. I can make him happy. You want him to be happy too, Heath. I know that. That's really why I came here today. Jim knows you don't like me. He doesn't know why any more than I do, but he's... he's just eating him up. I love this country. Heath, what are you trying to do to me and to Jim unless you really want to hurt him? I don't want to hurt anyone. Least of all, Jim. Well, then remember this. If you do anything to hurt me, you hurt Jim much more. It's not going to work. You told me yesterday everything was fine. With Jim, but Heath Barkley. You're not marrying Heath Barkley. You're marrying Jim North. Not if Heath Barkley has his way. What's he done? Done? He's done nothing. Well, then calm down. I just can't reach him. I can't get through to him. He's not the kind you can buy off. He has a feeling there's something wrong. All right, he has a feeling, so? I know this kind, and I know he's not going to stop. I told you to calm down. I don't want to be around, Reed, when he starts shaking things up. When he finds out. If he finds out. 
You'll be long married. You'll be Mrs. Jim North, the lady of the manor. Copper Creek isn't that far away, Reed. Don't worry about it. Everything's going beautifully, beautifully. You act as if you were made for this. Reed, I'll, I'll slip. I'll say something, I'll do something, and Jim, he'll find out the truth. No, he won't. Because he's so madly in love with you, he wouldn't see the truth if it was lit up with fire on the mountain. And that's the truth. I just can't hurt him. He's a good man. He's a decent man. He's an old man. He's a rich old man. He's buying more beauty and more, more love with his money than he deserves. And we're taking far less than we could get. Should get. Reed, this was a mistake. It was a mistake right from the beginning. Do you remember when you told me that I'd, I'd given you hope? And I've shown you a way of life you didn't even know existed. You can have that way of life right now. No, not like this. Just like this. For you and I, that's the way it's got to be. We knew that when it started. Do you remember Copper Creek? The saloon at Copper Creek? Do you remember how I hated you in those garish clothes, showing yourself to everybody? Do you remember how you hated yourself? Can you go back to that now? So now you just think about the two of us. In a couple of months, after you leave him, I'll take you back home with me. And you can be Mrs. Reed Clayton. Back home? I thought your father disowned you. Well, when I can, when I can prove myself. There's no more the black sheep for me. I've got the brains to make it big in the business world. But I need a steak, and you're going to get it for me. I don't want to hurt Jim. Now, I want you to forget about that old man and think about me. About me! Of course, I can't make it anymore, drifting around from town to town, winning a dollar here and there in a cheap poker game. I need your help. So I want you to go back to Jim North and forget all about Heath Barkley. Hey, Clayton. I didn't hear you knock, Kiefer. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. I'm sure that everything will be just fine. Everything. I don't like your timing very much, Keeper, but thanks for coming. Bartender said you wanted to see me. Now, what have I got? It's worth ten of your dollars. Well, if we can come to an agreement, we'll call that a down payment on services rendered. What do you got in mind? Do you remember the gentleman we played poker with the other day? Mr. Mr. Heath Barkley? time with Jared. Oh. Well, aren't you going to ask me what we were doing? It was mighty important business. All right. What were you doing? Nancy, you're not really interested, are you? Yes, I'm really interested. Well, I made out my new will. <laughs> Them lawyers, they sure know how to take something simple and make it complicated. My whole life went into building up this place. Sure, I had a few rough years, but now I got something I'm really proud of. Nancy, something I'm proud to give you. 
It's too soon. We've only known each other less than a week. Now, how do you know things are going to work out? From the moment I first saw you, I knew things were going to work out. This ranch, everything, it's too much. To... Too much? It's not enough. Nancy, I don't know how to say it. But in a way, this ranch, well, it's me. That's what I want to give you. Jim, excuse me, I have to go upstairs. Can I come in? Come in. Nancy, why are you packing? I'm leaving. Maybe we were wrong to think these things could work out by letters. But the letters are over now. It's a time we've been together that's important, isn't it? That's when we really began to fall in love. Jim, I'll make a mess of things. I'll make everyone unhappy. Heath, your friend. What about him? I saw him today, and... Jim, you must let me go. It won't work. You saw Heath today? Oh, yes. Victoria was going to show me around the ranch, but she was gone. Instead, Heath did. Here it is, the height of branding season. He doesn't like you, yet he spends time running you around the ranch. Jim, it's nothing like that. I got something to straighten out. Jim, I know where you're going, but you're wrong. Nancy, you're in my he way. He had nothing to do with it. I'm afraid he does. Jim, please. Heath, Heath! Heath, I want to talk to you. Jim, I gotta catch a train. I want to talk to you now. When I get back, it'll be too late. Get down off that horse. All right, Jim, what's bothering you? Where are you going in such a hurry? I'm afraid that's personal. Personal and coincidental. What are you talking about? You and Nancy leaving town at the same time. Nancy leaving? You don't know anything about that, do you? Heath, when Nancy came to me, she brought me more happiness than I'd thought I'd ever know. I haven't got the words to explain to you what she means to me, but if I lose her, I'm finished. I'm a proud man, Heath. But I'm asking you to leave her be. You're a young fella. There'll be lots of girls for you. Jim, it's nothing like that. Don't play innocent with me. I know what you've been up to. Taking her for rides. Asking her to come up to the ranch to see you. Look, Jim, if Nancy said anything like that, why... Say anything. She's too much of a lady to say anything. I'm saying... Jim, you're wrong. I'm not gonna argue with you now. Not now. Take her away from me without a fight. Jim, I'm not gonna fight with you. You're wrong in what you're thinking, Jim. One of these days you're gonna see that. Dog, mister. I guess you just don't like your smell. <laughs> uh, mister, you just hit my dog. Like hitting me. Now you're gonna have to draw. I'm a witness. He said, I saw the whole thing. The man was drawn on you. I'll testify to that. Thanks, Herb. You know who he was? No idea. Well, you're in the clear. I better get the sheriff. Yes, sir. 
I do. I'd like a ticket to Copper Creek, please. Copper Creek. Mister, you're gonna have to drink it fast. Don't want to drink, just some information. What kind of information? Now, come on, you little kids. Oh, I like to You like that, don't you? <laughs> sure you do. Excuse me, mister. Good as well go home with the following, huh? Come yes, on, cowboy. Huh? The lady's had enough of your what attention. You Let's go work closing. Let's go home now. Oh, the lady don't care on. for your company yet. Well, you found what you were looking for. You might as well sit down and have a drink. Now, what was that question, mister? Never mind. <clears throat> Last drink I had in this saloon was, oh, three years ago. Three years? Whew. That's a lot of drinks ago. girl on the stage. You changed places with her, didn't you? Yeah, I knew sooner or later you'd find out. Is that why you left? One thing Reed taught me is when to throw in a bad hand. What is it, Jim, you're worried about? Well, let me tell you something. How would he feel after two months if his wife told me that she didn't love him anymore and she leaves? Naturally, a nice financial settlement would be in order. You know, you had me fooled a couple of times. <laughs> Did I? At the stream that day, the way you talked. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe for a minute there I was wrong. Maybe you really did love Jim. <laughs> Not a chance. I'm sorry if I made him think different. But that's the way it goes, huh? That's the way it goes. I know he had a different kind of picture of me, but... I want you to do me a favor. When you see Jim, you give him this. That's really how I look. And when he feels sad, this will tear him up. All he has to do is look at it, and he will feel very lucky that I left him. And I wanted you leave him. He loves you. You know that, don't you? That's not my fault. I think it is. Whatever Jim is, he's not a fool. You gave him back something. But not love. Maybe kindness to an old man, but not love. Anyway, it's over. It's all over. You said he loved me. Well, he didn't. He loved a girl called Nancy Briggs. But in Jim's eyes, you were Nancy Briggs. I'm tired. He can go and home. Good night. Mind if I walk with you? Suit yourself. There's a gun pointed at you right across the street. I swear I didn't know he was here. Truth. She'll tell him. And Jim should take it. Good morning. 
Aren't you going to have any coffee before you leave? Oh, uh, no, Mother. Heath here is just itching to catch up with some branding he owes me, so we got to get going. We'll see you later, Mother. Oh, if there's any news from Nancy and Jim, would you send one of the hands out and let me know? No, I think I'll ride over myself. I get it. Oh, Nancy, Jim, come on in. Thank you. Thank you, Heath. Next time you kiss Nancy, you'll be kissing the bride. Well, congratulations, Jim. Oh, I'm so happy for both of you. Best wishes to you, Jim. Thanks. Victoria, I'd appreciate it if you'd handle all the wedding arrangements. Heath, I'd like you to be best man. We'd like it. How do you like that? She's arguing with me already. I'd like, oh, I mean, we'd like you as best man. <laughs> up like a San Francisco banker. Hey, I bet today's a big day, huh? It's the day, all right. You know, Nancy Stays doesn't come into Stockton, so I have to pick her up in the Stego at 3 o'clock. You're not nervous, are you? Nervous? What have I got to be nervous about? Not a thing? Darn right. You know, Heath, I must have written Nancy Briggs a hundred letters over the past two years, and it's just like caught her in person. You bet. She's a genteel Eastern woman, but that don't make no difference. She and me are gonna get along just fine. You don't need any more of that if you're going to meet that 3 o'clock stage. What do you say I do the honors? Well, that's mighty kind of you, Heath. <laughs> hey, Heath, oh. Jim. <Whew>. Oh. <clears throat> Heath, Jim. I think Nancy will like these. Well, we'll soon find out. Hey, easy, Jim. I'm just fine. I'm just fine. Are you sure you can drive that buggy all right? Yes, I can drive that buggy. Don't worry. Jim, it's my back again. Well, don't you move. I better get the dog. No, no. Oh, Nancy, she's expecting me. Well, you can't drive that buggy like that. She's waiting for me. Who's going to pick her up? He's... Mister. What happened? The outlaws they were held up. It was awful, just awful. He shot the driver and that poor girl. She, she caught a stray bullet. Miss, Miss Briggs here and I were lucky to escape with our lives. How long ago did they leave? Oh, about a half an hour. We thought it'd be safer to stay here by the stage. Oh, you were right. We'll see the sheriff when we get into Stockton. Do you think we could put the suitcases in your surrey there? Sure. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm supposed to meet someone at Pistico. 
Well, I'm Heath Barkley, Miss Briggs, Jim North's friend. Oh, hello. I'm afraid I have some disappointing news. I hope he didn't. Mr. Barkley. How are you doing all dressed up like a San Francisco banker? Hey, you bet today's a big day, huh? It's the day, all right. You know, Nancy Stays doesn't come into Stockton, so I have to pick her up in Stego at 3 o'clock. You're not nervous, are you? Nervous? What have I got to be nervous about? Not a thing? Darn right. You know, Heath, I must have written Nancy Briggs a hundred letters over the past two years, and it's just like courting her in person. You bet. She's a genteel Eastern woman, but that don't make no difference. She and me are gonna get along just fine. You don't need any more of that. You're gonna meet that three o'clock stage. What do you say I do the honors? Well, that's mighty kind of you, Heath. <laughs> hey, he's Jim. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> I think Nancy will like these. Well, we'll soon find out. Oh. Hey, easy, Jim. I'm just fine. I'm just fine. You sure you can drive that buggy all right? Yes, I can drive that buggy. Don't worry. Jim, it's my back again. Well, don't you move. I better get the dog. No, no. Oh, Nancy, she's expecting me. Well, you can't drive that buggy like that. She's waiting for me. Who's going to pick her up? He's... Mister. What happened? The outlaws they were held up. It was awful, just awful. He shot the driver and that poor girl. She, she caught a stray bullet. Miss, Miss Briggs here and I were lucky to escape with our lives. How long ago did they leave? Oh, about a half an hour. We thought it'd be safer to stay here by the stage. Oh, you were right. We'll see the sheriff when we get into Stockton. Do you think we could put the suitcases in your surrey there? Sure. Thank you. Well, I, I'm supposed to meet someone at Pistico. Well, I'm Heath Barkley, Miss Briggs, Jim North's friend. Oh, hello. I'm afraid I have some disappointing news. I hope he didn't change his mind. No, that's just a little trouble with his back. Nothing serious. Oh, I'm glad. It's nothing to worry about. In fact, Jim sent these to you. Oh, they're lovely. The sooner we get started, the sooner you can tell Jim in person. Thank you very much, Mr. Bob. 